Welcome back to the Road to City Hall. Nearly a week ago, the House of Representatives passed a farm bill that for the first time in decades did not include funding for food stamps. But the Senate version of the bill did include support for them, and lawmakers are now fighting to keep food stamps on the table as they hash out a final bill. Joining us now to talk about this issue are Joel Berg. He's the executive director of the city's Coalition Against Hunger. And joining us from Washington, D.C. is Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, who represents parts of Brooklyn and Queens. Thank you both for uh, being here. And Joel, let me start with you. I know you, you used to work in the Department of Agriculture. You, you, you know a lot about this program. Yeah. This is sort of historic in a way, right? I mean, the, the whole idea behind all the way going back to the 30s was that you would give subsidies to uh, farmers and then uh, the, at the same time, you'd get some of their surplus and give it to poor people. That's really where the program came about. And now for the first time, we're seeing those two halves of the equation being split. Yes, there were good substantive reasons and political reasons two sides were combined. Substantively, you wanted to make sure that farmers who had surplus were able to feed hungry Americans. And politically, to get a farm bill passed, you needed urban votes combined with rural votes. The rural votes disproportionately represented agriculture. The urban votes disrepre disproportionately represented poor people, although there are plenty of poor people in suburbs and rural areas now, too. And this really is the first time in decades that tie has been severed. Part of that's good if it severs corporate agribusinesses away from feeding hungry people, but it's bad if it totally disconnects food from farmers. And uh, Congressman, let's turn to you. How did that logic break down? What, what was it like being on the floor? Did you guys know that this was coming and that the Republican majority was going to insist that uh, we call it food stamps, but it's SNAP, uh, be decoupled from farm subsidies? Well, the farm bill was originally brought to the floor, it contained a $20 billion cut uh, to the SNAP food uh, stamp program uh, and apparently that was viewed uh, as too modest a cut uh, by dozens of members of the Republican conference in the House of Representatives and so they voted against it because it wasn't extreme enough uh, the Democratic members of the House of Representatives overwhelmingly voted against the original farm bill that contained the 20 billion dollar cut uh, because it was too harsh the combination killed the original farm bill Thereafter, uh, we were told on a Thursday night that the farm bill was going to be brought to the floor, but they were going to take out uh, the program that related to SNAP nutritional programs, food stamps, as it's been colloquially called uh, recently, from the original farm bill. This is very different. The farm bill has a tremendous bipartisan history, as Joel indicated, uh, with the interests of urban America and the poor being combined with the interests of rural America and farmers. And it was a very unfortunate decision. But it also illustrates the fact that under this current House GOP leadership, uh, they really don't have a capacity to govern in a meaningful way. W was this possibly, uh, Congressman, a symbolic vote where they wanted to uh, sort of show a portion of their of their conservative base that, yes, we're going to take a whack at uh, dependency, we're going to take a whack at food stamps, understanding that in the end it's, it's kind of unlikely that they're going to get what they're looking for in the way of these deep cuts. Well, it's possibly a symbolic vote, but nonetheless, uh, anytime the House of Representatives acts, uh, it does influence the debate to some degree, and that's why it was inappropriate for them to move forward in this way and break tradition. It's also important to note, Errol, uh, that the original Paul Ryan budget that is still the position of the majority of the House of Representatives uh, contains a hundred and thirty five billion dollar cut over ten years to the SNAP program and so the view in the House of Representatives is a very extreme one amongst my colleagues on the other side of the aisle as it relates to whether we should be providing assistance and support to people who are hungry in America the concern is that if we ultimately move to conference with the Senate and the House trying to reconcile uh, different views as it relates to the type of assistance that we should be providing, that the House position is so extreme that we ultimately can't reach a reasonable result. Okay, if, what would this mean for New York, Joel Berg, if there are deep cuts? Maybe not the worst case scenario, but something less than the worst case scenario would be a problem for New York, It'd right? It would be a desperate problem already. Two-thirds of the soup kitchens and food pantries in New York City don't have enough food to meet the growing demand. The SNAP program provides $3.5 billion worth of funding for food in New York City alone. Not only is it preventing mass starvation, it is a huge economic stimulus. Now, if 
the House Republicans were truly interested in deficit reduction, I'd still disagree with these cuts, but they're not. Their bill they passed, the fa standalone farming section of this bill, proved they're all about rewarding their special interests. It increased the deficit with more corporate welfare. This isn't about fiscal responsibility. This is about punishing poor people in order to reward their massive campaign contributors. Talk to my viewers who might think, you know, people who are, don't know much about the SNAP program, who think maybe, you know, look, it's best that people not be dependent on the government, you know, not be dependent on other taxpayers to make sure that their kids can eat. Um, is, is, there some, is there something you can tell them that, that this is not the way it's supposed to be forever and ever and ever? Well, first of all, I, I agree uh, people shouldn't be too dependent on government. I wish when Donald Trump rides a plane, he rode commercial, and so he wouldn't need one federal air traffic controller to protect just him in that plane when you and I get 250 people protected at the same time. But in all seriousness, that's my point, that we have this double standard. Rich people, middle class people get help from government every day. Look. The average length of time on the food stamps program is 10 months. Before the recession was six months. Two thirds of the people in the program are children, senior citizens, working people, and people with disabilities. 80% of the people on the program work the year before and the year after the program. It's not promoting dependency, it's helping people get by tough times. And, and Congressman, yeah. you, 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 you make those arguments, you and your colleagues are, are on the floor. Does it fall on deaf ears? I mean, some of the Republicans who voted for these deep cuts, they represent urban districts too, right? Well, a few of them do represent urban districts, but also many of them, as Joel indicated, uh, represent rural districts with significant amounts of poverty in those districts and people who are hungry. There are 50 million people who are hungry in America, 17 million plus of those uh, Americans are children. Not all of those individuals live in inner city communities such as those that I represent. You've got poverty in urban America, you've got poverty in rural America, and it seems to me that as we have done in the past, we've got to be able to come together. In the Senate, there's a bipartisan working relationship between Republicans and Democrats trying to get a workable farm bill. And we're going to try and uh, work to get one in the House of Representatives as well. It's the right thing to do. We're not trying to provide a handout to folks. We're trying to provide a hand up to people who are in a significant uh, position of desperation at this moment, trying to work their way out of it. We're still trying to recover from the worst economic collapse since the Great Depression. Uh, and until we get back to a point in time uh, where everyone in America is not going hungry uh, to bed uh, at night, then we still have to step in as a government and show some level of compassion. Okay, and Joel Berg, what do you uh, urge my viewers to do if they are concerned about this issue and want to make a difference? I urge them to contact their members of the House. Uh, all the members of the House from New York City, except Congressman Grimm, voted against this horrible package. So I ask them to contact all the members of the House and to contact Senator Gillibrand and thank her for her leadership. I often tell people to call people to tell them they stink, but Senator Gillibrand's been great. And to call Congressman Jeffries in your district and thank him for his leadership. We've got to reward the people who are doing the right thing and hold the people who are doing the wrong thing accountable. Okay, we'll see how this all plays out. Thank you for joining us, Joel Berg. Thank you for joining us, Congressman Jeffries. We are Thank going you. to take a short break.